Hi guys, so I thought I'd do a bit more of my doll's house today. Um, it's been a while since I've been in with my doll's house, um, but I've got a few things I wanted to show you. Um, and then I was hoping today to work on the bed because as you can see this is a bed that i got in the charity shop bundle um it has like a floral kind of thing going on so i kind of want to spruce it up a bit so i think i was gonna make a duvet i haven't decided i may make a duvet set or i may make like a patchwork quilt kind of a thing for it we will see so i thought i'd show you the things that i've got first um i have got a few bits in the halloween box which i got um which i opened the other day um which i still need to put in here uh but just right now the things i've got to hand are um i found this um rug i did mention it this also came with the charity shop stuff so once i've decorated this room um i'm planning on putting that rug down on the floor and then um, these also arrived in the post. I ordered these ages ago, um, but they were coming from China, so they've just taken forever to get here. Um, but they're actually like little door handles. So I ordered these kind of like bronze ones, specifically for the doors inside the house. Um, I only got four, so I figured I'd put four um, on the upstairs doors, and then I got four of these gold ones, which I'm going to put on the downstairs doors, including the front door. And if I can open this up with one hand, you'll be able to see that it comes with a tiny little key. It's so, so tiny, um, which I'm planning to put all on like one big key loop. And then this is like the little doorknob with the lock. Um, you can get ones that you screw into the doors, but since I've already painted them, I just got ones which are like plain back so I should be able to just add glue and stick it on so I'm going to have a go at doing that I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to need to use a hot glue but I'll have a go with PVA glue first um, and then if not I'll either try a hot glue or a super glue okay so I just used PVA glue and it seemed to work okay um they seem to be sticking all right but if not um you know it's not going to matter if they do come off I'll be able to just stick them on with a different glue um uh these are the two I have left I've got two of the more fancy like gold ones um and then all the keys are just kind of scattered what I decided to do because I basically had four of the plain ones and four of the gold ones I say plain they're kind of this sort of dulled brass colour um I figured I'd put the gold ones on like the fancy rooms and then the kind of brown bronzy kind of ones on the less so fancy so i've put a gold one on the side of the bedroom and then a brown one on the side of the bathroom oh and also here are the things that i painted now that they're inside the bathroom so i'm very pleased with how they came out um and then so down here in the formal sitting room we've got a gold one and then for the side which is just like the chilled out um, kind of cosy room um, I've put a bronze one and then downstairs I've done the same so a bronze one for the kitchen and then um, I've done a bronze one for this side as well um, just because I felt like this room isn't going to be particularly fancy or anything um, and then it leaves me two gold ones to put on the inside and the outside of the main door um, and I do also have the little door knocker to go on there as well so I'm gonna put all of those back in the like in the little packet keep those safe because um I need to fully like paint the door and things yet something I forgot to show you is are you prepared for this da -da -da -da! I put some lights up so <laughs> I did this um so I just did this really randomly the other day, otherwise I would have filmed me doing it. But I didn't think it was gonna work. Because basically, if you look up here, you can see I have this little battery pack. And these lights were actually on my Christmas tree. And if I take you underneath, you can see that they are just kind of taped to the ceiling. Um, this is just like a load of fairy lights, which I just positioned. So I've brought it down here. Um, so there's gonna be like this in front of it and then the battery will go under the bed. Um, but it comes down and it basically, I planned for it to go all the way around the back of the room and then come to this front bit and come into the bathroom then I figured they probably wouldn't be the kind of light that you'd have in a bathroom if that makes sense so I just carried on going around the room and basically they're these little bat lights so they're really cute um they're on a wire but they're like throughout so there's some at the front some in the middle and then some right at the back as well I didn't realize that they were gonna be purple but actually I quite like it it does give it a little bit of like a bougie look with the purple lights um but yeah the battery pack is up the top so that will be hiding um up there um so when I want to turn it on I have to kind of move the bed and turn that on but the rest of the 
lights I am planning on putting kind of center in the ceiling and going out the back of the house so I'm going to need to put little drills through the top um, and then I can turn them on from the back so yeah that was the first kind of light addition to the house um I guess it does light it up slightly I mean it's not like the brightest lights you've ever seen um but it gives it a little bit of character and I'm quite pleased with the way it looks it does make me excited to get lights in the other rooms as well so my mum won't stop messaging me on Facebook which is great um so now I'm gonna focus more on this bed so um I'm gonna take it out of the house and have like a little assess of the situation so here is the bed um when I got it it was broken but my dad just literally glued these pieces together so um it does look like the mattress was oh actually I take it back it is still removable so I could remove this mattress unless my dad accidentally glued it in place which I think he may have okay so <laughs> I could remove the mattress if I tried really hard um but I don't think I'm going to because it's a very flat bed and I want it to look kind of a bit more puffed up so I think I'm going to leave this kind of on here as almost like the bedding sheet so the bit that you're not really going to see because there's going to be a duvet hanging over it I want to make some big cushions and a bit like my own bed have loads of like Halloween cushions on there um, and make it look really comfy um, and a bed that maybe the cat would much prefer to sleep on so I think I'm gonna have a look at my um, Halloween fabric collection. It's getting very, very, very low at the moment. It's gonna be rather selective. Um, I do have a little bit of this fabric left that I used um, for the sofa, but I don't think like a matching sofa and a matching bed will look very good, which is why I was considering maybe doing a patchwork quilt because then I can just use loads of little scraps of um, Halloween material but together so that's kind of my backup plan so i am going to go and have a look at my supplies i mean worst case scenario i could maybe cross stitch um something to go on there like if i get a slightly um more like linen like ada um i could cross stitch something to go on there um alternatively i could just make a black one and just cross stitch like a little kind of panel thing to go on it um so yeah i'm gonna go have a look through my supplies and just see um it is you can't really tell but it is like very late evening it's just kind of like dusk is happening probably won't be finishing this tonight i just thought i'd give it a go especially as all the halloween stuff is starting to come out in home sense and i'm seeing multiple messages and pictures of all the amazing things in home sense i need a distraction and it needs to be spooky so i figured i'd come and sort this bed out now so yeah i will sort of check in throughout the process but it may be over the space of a couple of days Okay, so I basically had a look through my fabric. When when I say fabric, I do mean like tea towels. <laughs> like in the UK, the only Halloween fabric I can get like on demand, which just means like at Halloween in stores, um, are tea towels. So I buy like tea towels, which for two, it's like almost a fiver pretty much every time. Um, and then I do stuff with them. So I bought this tea towel for like when I move out. Um, and I just looked, it was in my tea towel box and I somehow for some reason, I don't know why, had cut out a big strip of it. So I must at some point have used this for a craft. By the look of it, it looks like maybe I made a scrunchie out of it because I just cut out a long rectangle. Um, but I can't remember any scrunchie in this fabric. So I'm not really sure. Um, also, disclaimer, if I do sound slightly weird, I do have an ear infection, which means I can't close my jaw on one side. Um, so if I sound like I've got a little bit of a lisp, that's why. Um, so I'm sorry if my pronunciation isn't as good as it could be. Um, but yeah, I found this and I was looking through some of my other tea towels, which I really, really love. And I thought I could cut little squares out of them and make a patchwork quilt. But it does seem like a little bit of a waste since they are like my favourite tea towels. And at the end of the day, like as much as I love my doll's house, um, I can't like justify cutting up other things i really love just for the sake of being part of like a blanket or something so i think i'm gonna just use this fabric since like i can't really use this as a tea towel anymore um so i think i'm gonna make a little well i could just cut it and make like a you know like a blanket like that but i think i'm gonna make a duvet cover 
ideally this print would be like all this size kind of a bat but I'm using kind of what I got here as I've said from like the word go I am working on a budget so I think I'm going to do that but I'm so obsessed with making a patchwork quilt so I have got another bed up there so I could make it for that um failing that I thought I could make maybe like a little blanket or something for maybe that room or even like a blanket that kind of hangs over the end of the bed or something so I would really love to do a patchwork quilt or a patchwork cushion or something but I just don't think that's going to happen for specifically this so I'm going to go ahead and make um this duvet cover so what I'm probably going to need to do is get I could very easily hand sew this but I'm lazy so I'm going to get my sewing machine out um so I'm going to set up downstairs with my sewing machine and it's going to be so so simple um I haven't looked up like any tutorials for this but I imagine it'll be super super easy to do so I just sat my camera on the floor while I'm talking um but basically I reckon what like all I'll need to do for this is to take the fabric um fold it in half and I want to make sure like it's long enough so that it drapes down either side i love it when um things drape oh my goodness that's like the worst out ever <laughs> can you see now <laughs> hopefully um yeah so i like it when things drape so i think if um i just fold it over just for the effect if i fold it like in half so you'll see it like that and then I can sort of drape it round like that and so it will kind of come down to the floor and then have like two big cushions on there. Well there's a bit of padding here as you can see but it's not great. I wonder if I can, do you know what I may cut that off, I've got some scissors. I may just cut this bit off because it's so unnecessary, like I think it's just going to throw everything off. Love a bit of impromptu just drawing. Okay, so I've cut that off, I'm gonna chuck that away, I don't really need it. Um but basically what I do is I'll tidy up these bits. Um and now I've just basically got a mattress, so I can work on that. I can add my own cushions and yeah, so basically I'm gonna tidy this up a bit, see if I can see if I can take this out. There you go. Um tidy this up a bit, there you go get those bits off it looks like it's all kind of stuck with um double-sided sticky tape there you go so i have just got a play mattress now i'm going to leave that cover on because you're not going to be able to see it so yeah i'm going to go set up downstairs and let's see how this goes okay so i decided to do it up here um rather than carting everything down so it's a little bit cramped um but i sat here and i made last year i don't think i filmed it but i definitely put it in a video um a massive like actual human size like patchwork um blanket out it was actually out of tea towels um so i did that all here it ended up being like bigger than a double bed like duvet spread so i figured if i could do it for an actual double bed i'd be able to do it for a doll's hat on um so um, I have done quite a few sewing videos in, in the past, but I know not all of you have been here for that long um, and also not all of you have seen all of my videos. So just a disclaimer, I'm not like a seamstress, I just use this old um, sewing machine that we've had forever. It was my mum's, but she just doesn't use it, so she kind of gave it to me. Um, I just kind of use it for everything. Um, it's already threaded um, with black cotton. Uh, last thing I did, I'm probably going to have to re-thread it actually to prefer. The last thing I did with this sewing machine was um, I sorted out my iron fist dungarees. So it should, I think, yeah, it's got black um, thread on the bobbin as well as the actual main thread. So it doesn't really matter if it was black or white because this is black and white. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to quickly re-thread this because... It looks all tangled up. I have an awful, awful habit of once I've finished using the sewing machine to just be like, okay, and like put it away and I don't sort it out at all. So as I was saying, I'm not like a seamstress at all. Everything that I know to do with sewing is self-taught. 
Um, I know last time when I did sewing videos, I had lots of comments on things I was doing wrong and things I could do to improve. And I always very much appreciate that. Um, but also I do work on a very informal basis. So I'm not gonna be making patterns or anything like that. Um, I'm just gonna be like freestyling. However, for the sake, I don't normally do this, but for the sake of camera, I will be using pins. Um, I use pins if I'm doing clothes or something like that, just because you know, with clothes, you want it to be a very, very specific size, but usually I won't bother um, if it's just for like something casual like a doll's house. So we'll use pins for the main duvet bit, um, but probably not the cushions. So I'm just going to cut off this um, label. Um, just so you know, these um, tea towels I bought from either HomeSense or TK Maxx over the past three, four years of shopping at HomeSense and TK Maxx. I probably only discovered HomeSense and TK Maxx probably about four years ago for doing Halloween stuff. I'm not sure how many years they've been the place to go for Halloween stuff, um, but that's where I've got these from and where I get all the rest of my duvet covers. So I'm just gonna work, I'm talking about all the rest of my tea towels, which will soon be duvet cover. So, um, gonna measure it out first. I'm just gonna cut up, make one big like rectangular strip on this side rather than, um, you know, all this messed up stuff that's going on over here. So again, as I said, I'm not very <laughs> like professional when it comes to this. I just do it all kind of by sight. At the end of the day, this is just gonna be sewn very kind of roughly and then put in the doll's house and probably not touched again. So, you know, I'm not, not gonna lose sleep over it. So that comes to the floor on both sides of the bed. So once I've sewed it, I think that'll be like the perfect height. I'm not too fast if it one touches the floor or if it two doesn't touch the floor or if it just skims the floor, I don't really mind. Um, so that's the correct length across. And then I wanna put it so that it's kind of at the bottom of the bed. So about there. So then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna cut across, cut it down to size. Um, in hindsight, I could have just used the mattress. As I said, always learning on the job. So again, I'm just gonna leave a little bit um, just to make sure that it caters for when I turn it inside out because even though I don't measure stuff, I still do sew it inside out and put it around the right way just because I think it looks slightly better. Um, so just line that up. I know it's not the straightest line. <laughs> These also aren't fabric scissors, I'm just using journal scissors, but they cut through absolutely fine. So I've still got loads of this material left for um, cushions and pillow covers etc so in theory this should be about the right size now so i'm hoping that it will go on the bed kind of like that once it is all correctly sewn so i do want it this way up just because i want the bats facing the right way i could put it that way as well that's the right way as well um yeah so the bats are the correct way just make sure your pattern's around the right way if you're going to be doing this um so then i'm just going to fold it in half and i'm just going to pin it Um, I don't know if any of you guys saw my post. I know I actually, I know some of you guys have because I've had some amazing submissions um, or like things sent to me so far. Um, but I would really love to do some like crafting for my doll's house. Oh my God, can you see this pin? It's like so wonky, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, I wanted to do some doll's house crafting inspired by some of your guys' um, doll's house crafting, <laughs> if that makes sense. So um, loads of people will be leaving comments saying that they're doing their own doll's house or um, they've been inspired to start one or they've just bought one. Um, and I just thought it'd be really fun to kind of craft along together. So if you didn't see my post and if you are doing your own Halloween doll's house or even if you're making miniatures, um, I always use this example, but the Midnight Crafter, she makes some gorgeous little like miniature shelves and things. She doesn't make them for a doll's house, but they would be perfect to go in a doll's house. So if you are making anything miniature or if you are decorating a, a doll's house, it doesn't have to be Halloween themed, but um, 
if you are please do send me pictures either on instagram or um facebook and if you don't have either of those leave me a message down in the comments and i'll give you my email address because what i would love to do in the future once i've kind of built up my doll's house videos a little bit more um i'd like to take elements so for example i had one picture where someone had made a pumpkin candle and it was so cool and i thought like in the future i would like to kind of give this person credit and then try and recreate what they've done for my own doll's house so uh, lovely sound um that's the plan with that as i said that's a little bit more in the future once i've kind of done all this basic stuff like making duvet covers so now that i have um i've turned it inside out i've pinned it i've pinned it quite far in because um as i said it overcut i'm gonna sew all the way around i'm probably gonna stop around here on this side just so i've got enough to turn it around the right way and then i'll be hand stitching the rest of it what i probably will do is turn it around the right way give you the kind of illusion of what it will look like make the cushions turn them around the right way and then i'll hand stitch all like all the bits together so that i'm not like constantly having to go back and forth with hand stitching so i first mentioned the fact that i wouldn't need to um sew this side just because it's folded so it's already there but if you did want to you could um do that side if you want the same kind of folded effect around the whole thing but i think for this case it's not really going to be relevant so i'm just taking out all the pins now before i turn it around the right way um i just literally stitched this with the um like the setting that was on my sewing machine from when i did my iron fist things um it's such a simple thing that we're doing like it's like the least complex of sewing machine stuff that i don't think it really even matters much what stitch we go for um you could just use a straight stitch or whatever so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut off this excess just because although i want it to look a bit puffy etc i don't want it to look too kind of boxy um because you're going to be able to if you leave like too much of a a trim i guess is what you would call it around the outside um it could like really bulk it up and sort of ruin the smoothness of it So what I sometimes do to kind of push out the corners a little bit um, is I use a pencil or you can use scissors if you're careful and I just push the corners and it points them out a little bit but I think it also looks quite good with the almost like slightly rounded corners especially as it is like a duvet and then this corner still in sewing as you can see I have that like hole um, but then that will obviously be folded in like that and then hand stitch so there is our duvet cover I think that looks quite duvet coverish um, as I said I'll go back and stitch in a moment but let me move that forward so that'll be the bed and then the duvet cover fits on like that I just realised I haven't even got the little mattress in. So that's kind of how the duvet cover looks. Um, as I said, it needs a bit more sewing over there. But I'm going to go ahead and make the cushions. I think it may be a, a smidge too long. Um, but I'm going to put the cushions on there. So I'm considering whether or not I should sew it a little bit, um, a little bit smaller. Or I guess I could sew it down like that. That may look quite cute. What do you guys think? Just like this. I love how I'm asking you again as if you're going to reply to my question. Um, <laughs> in the comments, do not do it as I do it. I think what I may do is I may just put a very like singular stitch down there and make it kind of like that. I think that will look quite cute. Um, obviously, I need to sew that up. So I'm going to hand sew this now. Then I'm going to put a little line stitch across there and fold that down. And I think that will look really nice. And then have the cushions up the top.
we've got this tiny bit of stuffing so I'm just going to put a little bit in at a time just to plump out the cushions a bit and then I'll just be hand sewing and then I think I will pretty much have the duvet and the pillows sorted. Okay, so I've finished the duvet set as such. So I've got the two little pillows. Um, they are ever so slightly a different size, um, but they're like tucked under the duvet, so I don't really mind. So I've got the two little um, pillows back there and then the little duvet that goes on top with the folded bit. So this is the kind of finished thing. I don't know about the bed. I'm not sure if I should paint it black or not because I actually really like this kind of mahogany wood colour because it's almost got this like, well it is, it's kind of like a red tone to it. And I just think it's actually really pretty. So I think I'm gonna leave the bed brown. Um, and also a lot of the furniture is also this colour. So it kind of ties in. I think it's still quite like a gothic colour. Like, um, when I think of an actual like gothic house not all the furniture is black some of it is like this deep red wooden colour um so I think I'm going to leave it this colour so that is the little duvet set done um so I'm going to make some cushions just to kind of go on there um I'm not sure exactly how many cushions maybe I'll make like two to go there and one in the middle and maybe some tiny little plush toys or something to go on there but I'm basically uh, it's now nearly half eight and I haven't eaten dinner or anything yet so what I'm probably going to do right now is go and eat dinner I'm going to probably just leave this all here and then tomorrow morning I'm going to come back and do the cushions and then I'll finish off this video for you tomorrow I think I've probably only been doing the actual sewing part for a little over half an hour so it's quite a quick thing to do um, and as you can see it was very simple there was nothing really in the way of patterns or constructing needed it's just kind of sewing rectangles so yeah I'm very pleased with how this is looking so far I think maybe we could get some orange cushions we'll have to have a think about how I can make some tiny little plushes to go on there since uh you know I am a fan of my excessive cushions and plushes Good morning, it's the next day. Um, I've just come back into the kind of office and I've seen this bed like sitting here and I'm just so pleased with how it turned out. Um, it, it's growing on me more by the minute. Um, as an update, I did find what I used the um, tea towel for, which was a scrunchie. Um, I was looking through my fabric and I found the scrunchie in the fabric. So no wonder I couldn't remember because I obviously just never used it after I made it because um, I put it in there and forgot about it. So I'm gonna make some more cushions. I've got a few bits of fabric here. Um, after yesterday me saying that fabric was very hard to come by, um, I got a message this morning from my friend saying that Hobbycraft have so much amazing fabric and there is some skeleton fabric which I would love to make like a skeleton duvet set at some point um, or something skeleton themed, maybe um, a sofa or something. So just a heads up for anyone in the UK, if you go in store, I haven't been able to find it online yet, but Hobbycraft do have some spooky fabric so basically i've got a few things here to make cushions out of so i want to make three cushions and then i'm going to think about maybe making some plushes i'm not 100 percent sure on the plushes yet or how i'm going to do them but first off i'm going to do the cushions it's going to be exactly the same as making the pillows but just with squares rather than rectangles so i have this um which is a spiderweb print and this actually some of you may recognize it was a t-shirt which i got from boohoo like it's a boohoo like man's t-shirt i got it uh probably three years ago and um, i did feature it in a video but the thing is i just i never wore it because it was very odd because it had the print on the front um but as soon as you got to like the back of the t-shirt it went black and also most of my like band t-shirts are like unisex but where this one was specifically for men the cut just seemed a little bit weird so um, I've been using this fabric for various different things. I think I made a scrunchie actually out of this. Um, so yeah, I've been using this fabric for quite a lot, but I figured it may look quite cute to make some spiderweb cushion covers. So I thought I'd make two black spiderweb cushion covers. 
Um, and then I've got this. So I've got I've got quite a few of these um, from my card swaps. I think I had three all together. Um, but basically this one is left over again from when I was making scrunchies. So I thought I could either make a cushion out of this, which may look quite cute, or I then thought afterwards maybe I could just cut out um, one of these moons and have like a moon one in the middle, which I think is probably going to be the thing I'd go for because just this is a little bit see-through. Um, and I love this fabric, but I think it's a bit more of like a curtains fabric, if that makes sense. I've got to be careful with this because I still need to make a couple of um, chairs for my doll's house to match the sofa. So I'm going to be quite sparing when it comes to this one. Um, I'm not too fussed with this. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. It's going to be the exact same process, as I said, as making the pillows, but with squares. So I'm going to make two spiderweb ones and then a little moon one to go in the middle. Um, I didn't realise that the spiderwebs are slightly different thicknesses, um, but whatever. Um, I haven't actually sewed them up, hence why they've still got their open bits. I need to put stuffing in them, but I think these are going to kind of go like this. And then I have the little moon one there. Again, I need to sew that up on the side, but I'm quite pleased with how that looks. I did think afterwards I could have sewed in a circle and just made it like a circular cushion, but then I probably would have lost all these little bats and stuff, so it probably wouldn't look as good. Um, so I'm going to put some stuffing in now and then hand sew them. And yeah, I think that looks really cute. Um, I think that's probably going to be enough cushions once those are all done up because um, you're kind of going to be seeing this bed side on once it's in the room but then I'm going to have a little think about how to make some little plushies um, I'm not sure whether or not I'll be making them out of fabric or if it's going to be easier to make them out of like a clay and make them look like fabric but I'm going to have a little think while I do the stuffing for these So I've been trying to think about what I could do to make the plushies for the bed. Um, I decided to look back in the box which we got this um, bed in from the trad shop and it had a couple of things at the bottom and I had one of these which I believe is like a civilian's family or something. They're these little toys and I think this is like a baby one but it's about the right size so I thought maybe I could do something with that maybe give it like a spooky outfit or something um I did also find this one pipe cleaner which is kind of like fluffy as you can see so I thought maybe I could try and make like a little toy cat or something out of it um because when I was at school I always used to make like little things out of pipe cleaner so I'm going to see if I can do that but as I said I can only find one I've got a whole packet of like a hundred somewhere and I can't find more about them which is so frustrating um so I'm going to have a go at that um, I did also think about maybe making like a little pumpkin toy or something so I'm gonna probably just use various different medias and see what I can come up with. made a few little things to go on there but I'm just going to make a pumpkin now. So I'm going to take um, a kind of technique which you can do with like a large bit of fabric um, and see if it works with a small one. So you need to start with a rectangle. I'm not sure if this is going to be slightly long but I'm going to give it a go anyway. And you want to make it into a circle and then sort of bunch it up at the top. So uh, hopefully yeah, that should be about the right size so once you've bunched it up at the top you need to just sew um, or knot around here just to kind of keep it all in place so I made a knot at the end of my string which means I should just be able to pull it like that 
um, and it will secure it. I think I'm going to do a couple of knots just to ensure that it doesn't go anywhere. You should be able to turn it inside out now and then once you've sewn the bottom it should end up being a kind of pumpkin shape. So what I'm going to do is just like how you kind of gather a dress or a skirt, I'm just going to do a simple like in and out stitch around the whole thing and then pull it tight. Okay, so I think that's pretty much done now. Um, there's one more thing I want to add to the bed. But before I do that, I'll just show you um, the different things. They're all made out of different objects. Um, this is what it will look like from the side. That's kind of how it will look when it's in the um, actual doll's house. First off, I made this little bat. Um, it's actually, I cut out one of the big bats here um, and I was gonna use that, but it didn't really work. So then I needle felted a body and then needle felted it to the bat to you kind of give it the wings. Um, and then it kind of bolted out a little bit with some more fluff. So that's the bat. Um, I did give him white acrylic eyes. I do want to add some like black to the eyes, but I'm not sure. Okay, it's nearly dry. So once it's dry, I'll add like some proper black dots. Um, but that is the little bat. I think he looks quite cute sort of at the top like that. Um, out of the pipe cleaners, I made this little cat. Um, again, I just gave it some white acrylic eyes. It's not the best, so I'm kind of just <laughs> hiding him away there. So this is the pumpkin I was just making. It is made out of the scarf which I showed you um, and then I needle felted a little stalk and a little leaf and then just sewed it on. So that's quite cute, that just sort of sits at the front. So here is the little civilian family's mouse. Um, I wanted to give it like a witch's outfit and give it a witch's hat and stuff but it was just really tricky and so I just made it a little skirt, like a polka dot skirt. Um, and it just kind of sits there. I'm not sure how else I could make that spooky. So if you guys have any ideas, please do let me know because I've been finding it, I just, I can't work out what I can do to make that mouse like more spooky other than giving it like a black dress. I tried making a hat and stuff for her, um, but it just didn't really look right. So I don't know if it just looks fine with the black dress or not. So yeah, just let me know. And then the last thing I made was this little ghost, um, which I did the same way as the pumpkin but um, without tying the bit at the end. So it's just literally a circle um, with like an in and out um, sewing thread down the bottom and you just pull it tight and it cinches it all together. And I just used a pen to give it some eyes. So it's kind of like a little sheet ghost. And there is stuffing in there as well to make him squishy. So there we go. We've got the duvet cover, the pillows, the little black cushions, um, the feature cushion in the middle, um, and then we've got some various little plushies, and then I do also have like a plastic cat um, to put on there, so it looks like he's asleep. So what I thought I would do, just to jazz up this bed, because I have decided I'm not going to be painting the bed, is I thought I'd add um, a little detail just on the end here to make it look a bit more spooky. Um, I was considering maybe like sticking stuff on the balls, but like quite honestly, it's a really, really gorgeous bed, and I don't I don't think it really needs to be messed around with too much because it's I think it looks really nice it is also going to be shown sideways so there's not really that much that you're going to be able to see detail wise okay so the stickers I picked up are these like 3d bat stickers they're a little bit glittery as well so I thought they would look quite nice just having sort of one on the end there I also picked up this pack because it has like some 3D candy corns and I thought it'd be quite cute to have like a candy corn either side. And finally I picked up these ones as well. I absolutely love these ones. Um, I actually think they look like wall decorations. What I think I'm going to do is put one of them like above the bed. As soon as I saw these in the little box that Kristen sent, I knew that these would be perfect for crafting. So I'm just going to line that up as central as I can. And push it on so there is the little bat um and then i was thinking of adding some candy cons but now i'm not too sure because i think that bat looks quite nice just as it is it looks adequately spooky um so from the side i mean you're not going to be able to see that much but i i don't think there's really anything that we can add to sort of the side of the bed maybe at a later date i'll get like a 3d spider or something i think that's pretty much my spooky bed 
done. So I'm going to go take it to my doll's house now and put it in. And then finally I'm going to pick one of these little things to go on the wall. Okay, so I just put it in the house and it looks super cute. But the only thing when I was going to take a photo that looked out of place was this little lampshade. So I'm going to do something with this lampshade. So I'm just finishing off the um, little lamp. I just painted the bottom part black um, and I put the fabric around, made sure there was a pumpkin at the front. So I thought I'd just put like a little line around the bottom. I found this really tiny like orange and black washi tape which I was given by Kristen in that box. Um, so I thought that would look really cute just to wrap around the bottom of it. Right, so time to go put this into the doll's house. I'm really pleased with how it came out. It was really, really quick. It took me about five minutes to do. So I've put everything in this room and I'm so, so pleased how it all turned out. I was kind of mainly working on this side because on this sort of side of the room, we've got the shelves. That was the first thing I made. Um, we need to obviously do something with the chest of drawers and stuff back there. I still need to paint those stairs that go down onto this level. Um, but as for like the bed and everything itself, um, I just, I think it looks really good. I decided to go with this 3D sticker that says creepy because um, of the black and white that matched the bedding um, and also the orange that matched like the other little bits in the house, like the, um, the pillows and also the little lamp that we made. So on the bedside table, we have the lamp. We've got um, three pumpkins. There's one like hiding brown there you can't really see um i've put the crystal ball that Kristen made me on there and the little mug with a pumpkin on and then i also attached one of those glittery bats to the side of these drawers um, and i just put a little skull under there i'm not sure if he'll stay there or not um, we've got the little kittens playing on the floor with the pumpkin rug that we made and i also just put Kristen's um stick in here as well I'm again I'm not sure if it will stay in here um so then over to the bed we've got the details on the ends um there's a little cat sitting on the bed and then we have all the toys so we've got the ghost the bat in the background um the little mouse the pumpkin and right back there is the pipe cleaner cat um, and then obviously we've got the bed covers so I'm really pleased with how that turned out um I did also mention I added the lights in um don't know if that makes it easier or harder to see what's going on in here um but yeah i'm really really pleased with that but i'm really pleased with that effect um let me move backwards um so you can get an idea of what the doll's house looks from the side um i think that looks really cute one thing i've learned is if you have a doll's house just buy loads of pumpkins because adding pumpkins anywhere makes anything look spooky so yeah that's about it if you do have any other ideas please do let me know i always i'm very very thankful for your guys insights so thank you very much for watching if you do have any questions or comments please do leave them down below if it's anywhere you are i hope you're enjoying the shade and i'll see you next time bye